أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله الكبير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط الصبيح صراط الذين أنت عليهم وغير إلا حدود عليك الله الله الكبير We are indebted to God for giving us this opportunity and this is not by accident, this is by divine design that we are here and, and we have got another chance to redeem ourselves and go through the same test that God has given us before. And so hopefully this time we'll, um, we'll pass the test and get closer to our Creator. So it's a huge opportunity for us and a huge honor and, and uh, privilege that we have today and that we are here. and, and uh, we are our test is not over, and so God has has chosen us to have this uh, opportunity, this chance to uh, to make a better um, person of ourselves and get closer to our Creator. Um, so all of these are blessings that God has given us, and we should be grateful to Him and make sure that we understand it that uh, none of these is uh, by uh, chance or or luck or anything like that. This is by uh, divine design and providence, and everything is written and everything is perfectly calculated, and God is uh, is watching over us. Um, <clears throat> so um, uh, today, what I wanted to talk to you about is that um, you know now this is the time again for Hajj, and Hajj has been doing has been done uh, incorrectly uh, for centuries now. And uh, and uh, some uh, simple ritual that God has has decreed for us, and and He um, uh, appointed Abraham to call upon people to come to Hajj, not not Muslims, not not believers, people. Okay, so this is God's house, and and God is telling us about that, and He said it's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, and so everybody can come there. It's a sanctuary for people. Uh, it's a neutral place for people. And so God has 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 um, um, has uh, seen it fit for us to have this uh, this um, the visitation of the Hajj uh, and this visitation of the sacred uh, house. Uh, and so and God is. Uh, is designed this for us to to become closer and and a better servant of His. Uh, so this is uh, this is a, a huge honor for us, and, and we should we should stick with His um, will and His commandments, and do not try to teach God about our own religion. Okay, God is the one who decrees religion for us, and He describes in the Quran exactly what the rituals of Hajj is or are. And and so we have to we have to obey him and follow his path, okay. And do not make a nuisance out of ourselves. Uh, a lot of people make nuisance out of, nuisance out of themselves, and as we see that uh, all of these disasters happen almost every year, uh, and and so this is a source of embarrassment, humiliation. Um, this is a place that God uh, is telling us that He is actually made a secure place. Okay, it's not up to a government or a group of people to make it a secure place. It's up to God to do it. And it's, as I say, it's open 24 hours. And God says, either do Hajj or Umrah. Okay, equivalence or. Okay. Um, so, um, so that that God is is telling us about it, and and uh, um, and so uh, and that's the entire year is open, so we can go anytime we want to. And so if the weather is too hot, you won't go at that time because you're not used to hot weather. And so these kind of disasters will not happen. Okay, because only five days out of the year it's open. Okay, for other reasons rather than uh, rather than following the path of God and, and making sure that everybody has access to the path of God. Okay, we cannot uh, a group of people cannot cannot uh, bar people from the path of God, and they have to uh, they have to make sure that they open the path 
and let everybody go to the path of God, and the path of God, one of them is to visit this uh, sacred shrine or sacred house, a better uh, understanding is the house, okay, so, and we have to, we have to abide by that, and as I said, this was decreed uh, to Abraham, and, and so, uh, we have to make sure that we understand it, and we have to make sure that we obey God's commandments, okay, and, um, and again, um, the feed, the feed, to feed poor and the needy goes around the year. Think about it, okay? All these unnecessary slaughter that goes on in Mecca, and this is not Quranic commandment, okay? You think that God's some some kind of bloodthirsty um, entity that has uh, needs needs um, uh, quadrupeds quadrupeds. Uh, slaughtered and and put to waste. Okay, so just think about it. This is supposed to go on the entire year, and so five days. What what are people supposed to do? The other 360 days, starve to death. Okay, but if you have this as a year round kind of ritual, then everybody will be fed. And those people who are can afford it can feed the people who are less fortunate and do not have the means to support themselves and put food on their tables. Okay, just think about this. These things do not make any sense. And so we follow these these wrong um, um, guidelines, if you will, if you can call it that. But anyway, and we think that they are correct. They are not correct. These are incorrect things. Okay. So God says, you eat from it and you you feed the one who is satisfied with the little and the beggar. Okay. That's what you do. And those people don't have to be in Mecca. It can be in your hometown. That's the idea. Okay? People do not understand this. And again, as I said, we see the consequences of this. The consequences are grave. The consequences are humiliating. Okay? You have to realize at some level that somebody is telling you you are not doing the right thing. Okay, God is telling you, you are not doing the right thing. This happens to you because your own hands brought it upon you. Okay, four months you can do Hajj. Okay, that's what God says. And so when you do that, then it's going to be cooler. But then again, God calls them all the Umrah. Oh, good. And, and, they're basically equal, equivalent. So you can do it the rest of the eight months, anytime you want to. It has to be open. You don't need visa. It doesn't belong to somebody. This is God's house. Okay. And the area... Ported. Okay, see? They stopped my recording. So anyway, so it doesn't belong to anybody. It belongs to God. And God invites people to come over there. And so that's he commanded Abraham to do it. Okay, people, as I said, not not individuals who are branded as Muslims or, or believers or anything like that, okay? This is for the people to come. And those people who are going to come, they like to come. They want to come. They want to see what's going on. We cannot prevent people from that. Okay, this is called this is called they are barring from the path of God path of God and we can't do that. Okay, they have to be allowed to go there. So these are very important things. So I, I wanna I wanna now switch over to another Ummah. And Ummah, they think that Ummah means Muslim Ummah. No, sir. That's not again according to the Quran. All classes of different animals, they're ummas just like us. This is according to the Quran. Okay? 
One of the Ummas are the chimpanzee tribe. Okay, and now they just found out. This is today's news on BBC.com, and I put the link there. So if you want, you can go and visit and read the the uh, article there. Okay, and I have it here uh, in large fonts. Chimpanzees self-medicate with healing plants. Okay, with all of the knowledge that we have and all of the uh, advances that we made in the field of medicine. Okay, when a new medicine or a new medication comes out, you have to go through a trial to see what is the uh, the healing uh, power of this medication is and what kind of what kind of harmful effect it could have on your body. Okay, and so there's this long list of things that could be damaged inside your body as far as your organs are concerned, and things like that, because you're taking this medicine to heal something which is wrong with you. These chimpanzees, okay, they follow these chimpanzees who were either ill or they were injured, and they followed one of them, and he went and ate this fern. The rest of the chimpanzees, they had their own regular food. But this one sort of limped away from the, from the uh, crowd and went and ate this fern, and they followed him, and he got better, okay? And now, in this case, is 100% the case, okay? All of these chimpanzees, they got better. And then we still have people, okay, who deny medication to their kids. They believe in self-healing or, or, or uh, faith healing, that's what they call it, okay? And... Come on, guys, why don't you learn? God says, look around you and learn. Okay. God's system is different. When he says there is there's healing in the honey, honey is a medication for you. When he swears by the olive, okay, the fig and the olive, there is medication or medicinal issues which is in there that's good for you. When he mentions dates, there is some kind of good thing in there for you. Okay. When he told, um, in the case of, in the case of, well, uh, um, God is telling us in the Quran that um, Job, Job was sick. Okay, so he said, "Go ahead and 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 basically kick this this ground here, and and a, and a spring will gush out, and you should bathe in there. There's healing process in these things. That's a medication for you." You cannot do that. You cannot go ahead with faith healing and all kinds of stuff. There are a lot of people in this world now, they're killing their children because of that. Because they do not take vaccines and they go about their business as though somehow they're going to be healed. And now look at these guys. Okay, these guys, God says, these are ummah just like you. God have taught them how to do it. God have taught them to go ahead and, and have this turn. And they do it, and they get 100%. No side effects. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And they're all healed. And so what they did was they took some of this plant, back to this laboratory in Germany, and they analyzed it, and they found out that what it has actually, it has a lot of good stuff in it. It's some kind of antibiotic type of thing, properties that this, this plant has, which is, you know, it kills germs and, and, and uh, bacteria and things like that, which is in, can infest a, a wound or an uh, injured part of your body. And it also has uh, anti-inflammatory 
properties, which is actually a pain reliever. That's amazing. Okay. You know, you take aspirin, which is the most common pain reliever, and it has other side effects. It could give you, you know, a ruptured uh, artery or something, and and all kinds of stuff. So uh, it's not it's not risk free. This is risk free. Okay. And so they're saying the study of these things, of these animals in the wild, could lead to new medications. And how they're actually doctoring themselves. And these doctors didn't go to Harvard or these big places or, uh, you know, uh, these medical schools, famous medical schools like Johns Hopkins. They didn't go there. Okay. They they were taught by God, they were inspired by God what to do and 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 they do it and they are healed. Okay. And so there are so many lessons that we have to learn from this, that the way we do things are wrong. They are not right. And we have to learn from this, from the world that was around us, and God says, Look around you and learn and increase your knowledge so all these lessons are for us there so i'm going to stop here and we'll, we'll uh, finish this unit i'm not going to be here